beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's going to be this month's monthly ranking where I'm going to rank everything from fail to holy grail, all the things that I hauled the month before. I've not gotten the chance to try them and I'm coming back to you letting you know my final verdict on them. I do this every month, I just come back and do a roundup review round, just ranking everything from like things that I don't like to things that I really enjoy, because I do find some really good stuff here. And I also feel like it's not enough to just give a first impression, like I want to come back and give my final verdict after trying them for a month. I'm actually wearing quite a few of the things on my face today, and if you haven't been here before, hello, my name is Angie, I am such a lover of beauty makeup, I love everything beauty makeup related, I love trying all of it so you don't have to. Letting you know which ones are the best and which ones you could definitely skip. I'm also such a lover of color, so if you want to see some more color in your timeline, don't forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week. This video is also super exciting because it is sponsored by HelloFresh. Thank you so much HelloFresh for working with me again. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I love HelloFresh. I am myself a paying HelloFresh customer and I had been for several months before I started working with them. If you follow me on Instagram, you do see me posting some things that we do with HelloFresh. Me and my husband, those posts are not. Those posts are not sponsored. It's just me doing my normal HelloFresh meals because I love HelloFresh. HelloFresh is such a nice way of trying new recipes not having to go to the grocery store, not having to do all those planning things. And that is the reason why me and my husband started with HelloFresh because we we didn't like dislike the food that we cooked, but we were in such a rut and we didn't like the planning and going to the grocery store, you know, buying all the things and bringing them home. I bet you're, I bet you're like me sometimes. I don't mind the cooking part if everything is already at my place. I don't want to do the planning. I don't want to go to the grocery store. And also this has been a very sustainable choice for us because we don't throw away food anymore. Before, you know, sometimes you want to try a new recipe and you buy something and you use like a tenth of it and then you throw it away. One of the best things you can do for the environment is to not throw food away. There's no point in people growing things so you can bring them home and throw them away. So for us, that has been amazing. We don't throw any food away anymore because HelloFresh delivers to our door pre-measured ingredients and we just use all of it. The recipe that you're seeing here is something that I'm cooking for, I think the third time. I love this one. This is coconut soup with lime and sweet potatoes. I love it. And this is something that I would have never thought of to cook on my own. I really feel like HelloFresh got us out of a rut, got us trying new recipes and they have so many vegetarian options. Me and my husband do get the box for vegetarians. Sometimes we switch it out for other things. It's very flexible. Like if you want to skip a week, if you want to switch out recipes, it's all so very flexible but I love the vegetarian options that they have because these are recipes that we wouldn't have thought of on our own and they're just restaurant quality meals and we get for four people even though we're only two so that we can save them leftovers for the day after so we get like dinner and lunch. I also really love that there are so many fast options like there are so many recipes that are like 20 minutes or even less that you can pick if you're like me and you just want to like you know have food on the table quickly so I always end up picking at least one of those because sometimes you just want to have food on the table real quick and there's always a bunch of those recipes to choose from if you just want to have the quick options and trust me those are really tasty too. So go to hellofresh.com slash 14 and use the code anyeshka14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That is hellofresh.com slash 14 Use the code anyeshka14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you again, HelloFresh, for working with me. This is a service that I've truly enjoyed myself. Me and my husband are very happy customers of HelloFresh, so I highly encourage you to check out the website and see what they're offering. Now let's get into the ranking. I do actually have quite a few things that I didn't enjoy. Before I get into my fails, I have a couple of things in the bottom of this basket that I'm not gonna be ranking because these are things that I've already like, I've already reviewed. Like these are like super shock highlighters. I'm actually wearing two of the ones from the Tinkerbell collection today. I am wearing Happy Thoughts and Darling. I love the Super, Sh Super Shock formula. I think it's an amazing formula. I don't need to be uh, like ranking them again. It's also the cream lip tints. I think I ranked them last month. They're decent, not my favorite. Same with the lipstick formula from MAC and Charlotte Tilbury. I think they're really good. I need to, don't need to be harping on that again. And the Super Shock Shadows by Colourpop. These from the Tinkerbell collection, they're exactly as good as the normal ones from Colourpop are. So if these are any colors that you've been eyeing, I don't think you'd be disappointed with the formula. So these are ooh, just things that I've already reviewed and they're the same formula as the other, like the normal range, so I don't need to be harping on it. Okay, I have a couple of things here that I don't like at all. I think I'm gonna put the liners from, from Tinkerbell in the bottom, and that is because 
color pop liners can be a little bit hit or miss. I'm gonna put this to the side right now. I don't think that these are up to par as to what some liners from ColourPop can be. I like the ones which not like non sh Ugh. I like the non shimmery more than I like the shimmery ones. I'm gonna put these at the bottom because I didn't like these at all. They didn't work in the waterline. They were very hard to like work with all over and I don't think that these are a good representation of the ColourPop liners. I don't think that this is a good formula at all. The next thing I'm gonna mention and this I probably should have taken last month but it just it didn't happen these are the fresh kiss lip cremes i don't like this formula the more i use it the, the less i like and especially like i was trying some of these lighter colors and i was trying some of these lighter colors and i'm like there's something about these that i don't like these are these are like smeary and silicone but in a bad way because they keep moving around and i didn't think about it that much when I was using the lighter colors because you don't think about it so much but when I got the darker colors on you could really see how these were just seeping outside of the lip line they were just like getting into those little cracks around your lips just extremely unflattering and just like disappearing they're like moving around in a very unflattering way I like being able to you know do that and be able to like get your lips to be better but when you do that with these they just move around in a weird way and look patchy and they're like the wear time on these are like 30 seconds they look amazing when you put them on you're not even going to be able to get out the door before these are like not a good look so i don't understand this formula because i feel like colourpop can do really good formulas uh, but i i feel like they lost it <laughs> They used to do really good formulas, but I don't know. I don't know what happened. I also don't like the feather effect brow pen. Wow, there are three ColourPop products at the bottom. I feel really bad about that. I feel like ColourPop, when they do bad things, they're really bad. This one, it is very small. It is very small, but it's also very stubby. And this is a felt tip liner, and I can see that it's already frayed a bit. It's just, I wish that this was a brush tip applicator. Had this been a brush tip applicator with a slightly longer tip, because this is so short that it's stubby. So it's like, you're supposed to do hairs in your brows with it, but because it's so stubby, there's no give to it. It just becomes very sharp hairs, and it's like the strokes are not that effortless as they are with the next one. I adore the next one. I will link what I'm wearing on my face today in a pinned comment down below, in case you're wondering about what's on my face. This makeup look is filmed and it might be live. I'm not 100% sure. If it's live, I'm gonna link it down below. If not, just know that it's coming in like a day or two. So yeah, I don't like this pen because I think the applicator is just not perfect. It should have been longer. I do prefer brush so much more than felt because there are so many problems with felt. It frays. It usually doesn't disperse. Like if you do you both your brows with it, it doesn't disperse product as good with the first stroke as it does with the last one. Like it's just not ideal. And I also want to mention this one. I'm just going to mention it quickly, even though I don't think that this is a brand that like we will be talking about a lot on my channel. I like this a lot first times I tried it. This is the Wicon Smoothing, Smoothing, Smoothing Secrets Lift Effect Concealer. The problem with this one is that it creases a lot. There, I, I mean, smoothing, it goes on really nice and moussey and just looks really good, but it creases a lot and it creases even with a lot of powder. This just does not set down at all. So I really have to babysit this one and really look at like my under eyes and pat the creases out. And that's just not something that I love for me. I bought this when I was in Italy. Uh, this Wicon is a, like a Italian affordable brand. So this one isn't my favorite just because the creasing is intense on this one. Like it's a lot. Now I want to mention this entire, like I have everything here in front of me. This entire BH Cosmetics and Dosha Cat collab thing. I have everything here in front of me. I have the, this is probably the item I like the most out of the collection. This is the uh, blush trio. If you're gonna get something, get this one. The liners are okay, a little mediocre. I'm gonna be honest, if you want an affordable color, colorful line, I personally prefer the Colourpop ones more. The highlighter, it's okay, but the undertone of this one is really weird. It's also, I feel like and this is something that I say with like loose eyeshadows as well. If you're gonna have a loose eyeshadow, 
the extra amount of work it takes to work with a loose formula compared to a press formula, it better give me an amazing result. And this is not even better or like glowy as as glowy as some of my uh, affordable pressed highlighters and for that reason i don't understand why it's loose it's just nothing exciting with it and then we have the palette and i also have two lip products this is the lip gloss and this is the lip balm these are pretty mediocre the packaging is pretty clunky and i mean bh cosmetics is an affordable brand but there's something about this that just reads even a little like more affordable than how I felt like they have been before. There's just something about this, this just doesn't feel very refined. This is the Mega Palette, sorry for not opening it, took me forever. It is so big, that's what she said. It's so big, there are so many shades and I will say there are some really extraordinary shades in here but there also is a whole bunch of pretty mediocre shades and it's not an affordable palette. Like, I understand they have to pay the celebrity. I get it. And maybe this is exactly what Doja Cat wants. Maybe this is her perfect formula. But since there is no explanation when celebrities are doing, like, collabs, like, why did you pick these colors? Why, why are we having these formulas? Why are these, like, mediocre shimmer formulas from 1993 and not those updated really good shimmer formulas that Beach Cosmetics normally has? And I think... They probably paid her so much money that they had to skip a little bit on the quality. And that makes me feel that this is less good makeup and more mm, Doja Cat merch. So for me, I would say Beach Cosmetics makes amazing eyeshadows. Uh, but these are not bad, but they're pretty mediocre. I'm gonna say this entire collection left me feeling like... Okay. Like, I... I it's it's mediocre. It's it's I'm not wow. I like the looks that I did with it, but I could have done them with other BH Cosmetics products for less money and just even better quality. Like I yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not blown. I'm not blown away. I have a couple of like we're in the it's okay a little mediocre pile right now not mediocre but like i'm not like blown away this is the wycon light me up stick highlighter this is a really affordable little thing it's not like super super glowy i don't know if you can see it here it's pretty light on me right now because i did sleep with self tanner i'm not 100 percent sure if that was like the best I could do. This one, uh, again, I bought this in Italy as well. This one works better without uh, without foundation. I wore this when I was just wearing concealer and just this on the top of my cheekbones. That worked really good. If you put this over uh, foundation, it will blend a little bit with the foundation and it won't look as glowy. So for that reason, again, like there are other cream highlighters that I would recommend over this one. It's not bad, but it's also not like I'm not like blown away. Let's just put it like that. This is, I have a small sample. This is the Fendi Pro Filter uh, Soft Matte Foundation. I will say, to, to give this foundation a little credit, the longevity of this one is amazing. Like really, really long longevity. But I have foundations with similar longevity that I like more. Um, they are not as dry because this is really a matte foundation. If you have dry to normal skin, I have normal skin, I don't necessarily recommend this one because I think it's very dry and you can even see it when I used it. This is a, definitely, I bought it too light of a color, but you could see it when I used it that when I tried to blend it out, it just didn't blend easily. I just, I think that this foundation is perfect for some people. It's just not perfect for me. It looks a little dry on my skin, so I think that maybe if you have oily skin, this is better for you, or if you are really into that super matte look. I, I like something that has a little bit more glow to it. I don't want dewy foundation, but I just felt like this was too, too matte for my liking. I did try some of the Sigma lashes. These are only the foam ink lashes in Fantasy. I did get a full PR box with all the lashes and I haven't been able to try those yet. So this is only gonna be me uh, reviewing these. And th this is just my opinion. I think these are good quality, but for me, they are too short. So I won't be, probably won't be reaching for these more. I might just cut them and make half lashes. I am wearing half lashes today just because then I'm able to manipulate them a bit more and put them a bit more upwards so I can get like, because I like lashes that are 
spiky like this, but not to bend so that I can have them point upwards. I want them to be long and spiky. I don't want them to be voluminous. I want them to be long. Does this make sense? So if you wanted to try some lashes that are not too long, you might like the Sigma lashes because I honestly think now that I have gotten them in PR, I think that these are the longest of the lashes. I'm gonna at least try one more before I like give my final verdict about the whole range, but I will say just as a observation from seeing all of them in real life and from trying this one, they are dramatic lashes, but maybe not as long as some other lashes. So if you feel like you wanna try false lashes, but you don't want them to be too long, this might be an option for you. I'm gonna put this one here, and this is not because I dislike it. I don't dislike this one. Can I put this, like, take this out of the packaging now? Because it's ridiculous. It's only because I have the sharpener in here. This is the Perma Gel Ultra Lip Pencil with sharpener in structure. This is from Pat McGrath. This is a beautiful color, but I feel exactly about this as I feel about some of the other high-end lip liners that I've tried. These are nice. This is good quality. This is not a bad pencil. If you want to treat yourself, fine. But there's nothing special about this packaging. Like, it's just a pencil. Like, there's nothing special about this pencil. I feel like you could just as easily get a good liner for less money. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. That's the only reason why I'm putting it here, because this is a good liner. But there's nothing better about this than affordable liners. I need to stop buying high-end liners. Maybe that's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Because I feel like there are so many good affordable options for lip liners that you don't need to spend the extra money. And if you're looking for that like luxury experience, liners are liners. Especially this one, it's just a sharpenable liner. If you want the, the, the ultra luxe experience, there are definitely other things from Pat McGrath that I would recommend over the lip liner. I'm gonna put the Beauty Bay palettes here. I like Beauty Bay's formula, but it's not my absolute favorite. And the main reason is that I don't feel like they build that good on each other. This is the Disney collab that they did like round one. I know that they are like releasing a round two now, if I'm not mistaken. This is the Jungle Book one. This is the uh, Cheshire Cat. I'm never gonna say that correctly. I really enjoyed this one because it's so deep. I didn't get the Dumbo one. And like I said, now they're releasing two more. I like the Beauty Bay formula if you know what you're getting yourself into. I don't think that they layer that good. The best thing you can do with this formula is to just start with the darkest one and then just blend out with the lighter ones. If you do that, the result is amazing. If you try to start with the lightest one and then build a medium on it and deepen up with the dark one, you're not going to have that much luck with the deeper one. So this is just a tip from the coach if you're working with the mats from Beauty Bay. That start with the darkest one and blend it up with the lighter one. I also am not the biggest fan of the shimmers from Beauty Bay because on me, those crease within like 30 minutes and that's not ideal. But I like these. They were pretty affordable. I think they're really cute. The color story is really different. Who is banging at this time? It's like 10 in the morning. Tight! I have videos on pretty much all the things I'm gonna be talking about and I will link corresponding videos down below. I probably will not put everything in the description box in the order that I'm talking about it because I won't be able, but everything that I'm talking about, or at least most of it, I will have corresponding videos. I will link it down below. In case you're wondering where to get it or where to watch more additional info, I do have a video on the Doja Cat collection. I have a video on this. Like I have videos on all of this. I have like a full face of Pat McGrath. I will also link that down below because there are a couple of things from Pat McGrath that I think is absolutely amazing and we'll talk about them soon. Okay, now we are getting into... I have so many really, really good things. Good things that I am loving. <sighs> So it's gonna be hard, but we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it. You know what? I'm gonna put the Bare Minerals uh, Liquid Mineral Concealer, and then at the next spot, I'm gonna put the foundation. I do love the foundation more than I love the concealer. The foundation, I, I got both of these from my friend Maggie, and neither of these are really my color. This is a neutral ivory, and this is a medium beige. This is very peachy. This one works for me. Uh, if I use a very yellow toned or a very warm bronzer because this is pretty peachy on its own and this one is just too light for me if we're gonna be totally honest. This concealer is in light 2N. This is a really good color. I'm actually wearing this one today. I do like this color more than I like these colors. The reason why I put this one on top is because this one wears really really nice. And this one, if I'm gonna be totally honest, creases a bit on me. So I do have to babysit this a little bit, but I'm gonna be honest, this, this combo looks really beautiful. I will link the video down below where I'm using these. You can see them like 
how they wore and stuff. So they have a really good longevity. They look really beautiful. This is just not the perfect color for me, but I, I, I really like these. This one just creases a little bit on me. What is that? Oh, someone's driving by. And then after that, I'm actually gonna put, I still have this in the in the packaging. And the only reason why this is on top, this is the Luminous Silk by Giorgio Armani, is because this one just looks so beautiful on me. But I'm gonna be honest, the reason why this isn't on top, the longevity on this one on me, I like I said, I have normal skin, I'm 37, I do have some fine lines. This moves around a bit and it really moves into my fine lines and it really, really, gets oily throughout the day. So even though I like the finish of this one, whoop, more than I like the finish of this one on the skin, the longevity of this one brings it down a little more. If this had a better longevity, it doesn't have to be like 15 hours, but the longevity before I have to start babysitting this one is around six, seven hours for me. And I feel like that is just a little bit too short for my liking. So if I'm going somewhere and I know it won't be longer than that, this would be perfect for me, but I will need to bring a powder and just something to like tap out the lines and stuff because this does move around a little bit on me, but it looks beautiful though. I can't lie that it looks absolutely stunning. I am gonna put, oh, this is, this is getting so hard, but I'm gonna put the entire Cinderella and Sigma collab. I have everything here, including the brushes. I'm just gonna put this entire collection on the next spot. I think all of these things are really beautiful and high quality. The only reason why I'm putting it a little bit lower, I think that this one is probably the one that I'm gonna reach for the most. This is the Cheek Duo. Uh, the highlighter formula from Sigma is just absolutely amazing and the peachy blush. Can I get rid of this plastic? Let's please. This this is probably my absolute favorite. It's because I like the other things even more and those are things that I've reached for even more uh, throughout this month that I've been reviewing them. Let's get rid of this plastic too. So this is the eyeshadow palette. I do have a video where I'm swatching and doing a look with this. I think this is a really pretty palette. I really like the Sigma mattes, but I'm gonna be honest, the Sigma shimmers, they usually have a little bit of a dark base and I don't love that. They're usually never like bright or light enough. I want more variety when it comes to shimmers. I think the quality is beautiful. I just wish that like, for instance, there's always like a dark cast or a darker base on these lighter shimmers. And I wish that we could get something that was like an actual like light, bright, like contrast. But that's that could be just me as well. But I really do like the quality though, and I don't think you'd be disappointed if you like the color scheme of these. The next thing is the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder. This one, I really, really enjoy this one. And this have, has even a better longevity. I wore this yesterday. It is so pretty. It is a lightweight, light coverage foundation. It has this squeezy tube with one of these applicators that I really like. I think those are so easy to use. I have mine in the shade 6 Me. Medium. I thought this 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 is probably me, but I thought that this was going to be the same shade as the six that I have. But this is a olive undertone, and it is a little bit. It turns a little bit gray on me because I don't have an olive undertone. So this is just probably like user error. I got the wrong shade with this light. Uh, it looks like it's way too light for me. I didn't sleep with some self tanner because I was I was gonna wear self tanner yesterday it became too late I had to sleep with my self tanner and now I'm just really tan I'm not usually this tan but yeah this six medium I think I need to go like the next like more golden shade for it to fit me but the finish of this one how it looks is beautiful it just makes my skin look a little bit grayish so I have to like warm it up with bronzer, but that is mainly because it has an olive undertone and I do not. I really like the Pat McGrath uh, like blush. I think this is an absolutely stunning blush. This is in Nude Venus. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. It is just absolutely stunning. It's one of, one of the prettiest blushes I own, not only in packaging and in formula and how it looks on the cheek and longevity, but I can't put it on top because it is so expensive and there are blushes out there. You can get a similar result. If you want a glowy blush, if you want something that's like, I will always recommend the, uh, the, the, the Super Chics by by a Colourpop because I think that those are amazing. But on the other hand, like I do love a lot of high-end blushes. I love the the ones from Natasha Denona, like those are beautiful, the one in Alba and Rayo. So I really do love it, but it's like, can you, like, do you need it? 
that you don't need anything, but you definitely don't need an expensive blush like this. But here's what I said before. If you want to treat yourself, if you want to get something that has that luxury feeling, instead of getting the lip liner, get the blush. The pattern is beautiful. The finish is wonderful. This like luxe packaging, even though it is a little bit like hard to open, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, it is a little bit hard to open, but this is that luxe feeling that you're not getting with the lip liner. So definitely get this one instead. If you just want to treat yourself and get something really nice, get the blush instead because this is definitely that luxurious experience. I really enjoy this lipstick formula, not only because the color is orange, it is just so pretty. I love this so much. This is the uh, 169 Love Rendezvous. Uh, this is from L'Absolu Rouge from Lancome. It is a beautiful matte lipstick that is a comfort matte but still looks incredible matte on the lips. I bought this when I was in Italy and it smells a little bit like lipstick. I don't love that but how it looks, how it wears, how it feels extremely high quality and also the packaging is like stunning like you push it up like this and it comes out here like stunning so yeah i i definitely definitely recommend this i think it is is a beautiful formula the only downside with this except the price these are pretty like expensive but like how nice to put this in your purse though if you find your perfect color this is nice burnt orange the only problem i think with this is the smell. It smells like that typical lipstick smell. Some people love it, I don't, but I still really, really love this formula. A lipstick that I just love a little bit more, and it's because it has all the benefits of this one, unfortunately not in the burnt orange color. I even have one of these in my purse. This is the Majestics by Linda Halbert. It has a nice packaging, maybe not as luxe as the Lancome one, but they're also not as expensive. And you twist them up, it has a nice like geometric shape, smells sweet, a little vanilla -y, like something something sweet it has a really nice component it goes on really pretty this is more like a cream like a classic cream lipstick like a satin but they look so beautiful they have such a nice finish on the lips they are fully opaque just a really nice formula in a really nice packaging uh, like a high-end formula and not a high-end price you can get these at Beauty Bay I will link them down below really think these are beautiful I hope she comes out with more colors Where's my orange? I'm gonna put both of these on the same position because I'm gonna be honest, I think these are, even though they might not like feel the exact same way as they, when they go on, on me, they wear the same. This is the Pat McGrath concealer. I have mine in L5 and this is the NARS Ultra Creamy Concealer. I have mine in Meron Glacé. So sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. They are pretty similar in shade. Maybe the uh, NARS one is just a hint darker. These are pretty full coverage, pretty easy to blend out, and they don't crease on me, even if I just set them with a little powder. They are very nice when you have a little bit more textured under eyes and you want something that's high coverage, but just doesn't make you look like a lizard like nobody wants to look like a lizard with concealer and I have been enjoying both of these and I feel sad that it took me this long to try both of them maybe this one is a little bit easier to work with because the consistency is a little like creamier like a little moussier which makes it easier to not use too much this one is a little bit more liquidy in formula so it goes on beautifully but also makes it a little bit more easy to like over apply to use too much like less is more I like the powder even more in the video like I said I will link it down below the full face of Pat McGrath I used this powder on half my face and you can literally see how it blurred my face I do have this all over my face today I will say though I mixed um, I mixed the foundation with something that's a little bit glowy, so it made my face look extremely glowy, but that is like me mixing it with the Huda skin tint, the glowish skin tint. Um, that is not this powder, but it's a really nice powder. I have it both under my eyes and I have it all over my face, and it's just a really nice powder. The only downside of this one, first of all, it is small. This is small, so small. Four grams. I don't know. Is that a lot? Let me look. Let's look at the Charlotte Tilbury. This is eight grams. Eight grams, and this is very expensive. The Charlotte Tilbury powder, although I will say, I, have, I mean, here's the thing. I love this more, but I'm guessing they're around the same price tag, but this is half the amount. 
That makes this incredibly expensive and also one of the biggest downsides of this one, I have mine in medium, is that the it's so loosely pressed that the kick up is intense. As soon as you touch your brush with this, it will start just like almost breaking down the powder. It is so loosely pressed that you will definitely get enough on your brush, but yeah, it's it it just makes a bit of a mess all over, to be honest. I don't know if I can show you, if I can just... No, you can't see. Could you see that? The little powder, like the little... I don't know if you saw the cloud. It just... I feel like you will go through this even quicker, not only because it's very little in this packaging, but also because it is so loosely pressed that you end up having a lot of kick up in the pan and all around, and that's not ideal when something is this expensive. Does she have a loose powder? Is it as good as this one? Let a girl know. I have a lot of eyeshadows that I've really been enjoying, but also remember that this is, this is a channel about playing with color and having fun, and I do review a lot of eyeshadows, and I really love eyeshadows. Like, eyeshadows is my absolute favorite, so it, it makes sense that I do review a lot of eyeshadows, and that those, if I find them, I end up loving them a little bit more. So I'm gonna be honest with you, all the things that I'm showing, like this past thing, it's, it's things that I really love. I just need to rank them in a good way. This is so far my favorite, favorite birthstone palette so far from BH Cosmetics. It is so good. These mattes are incredible. These shimmers are so beautiful. There is a press glitter. I don't love that. Apparently they, they, they committed. They committed, they're doing press glitters in every palette. I don't love it, but at least it's consistently bad in all palettes. Let's just put it like that. This at least is like one of those like multicolored, almost confetti-like. It's a little bit fun. If you like press glitters, at least you have an option here. These are $9 palettes with the good this is the good BH Cosmetics quality. These, like, colorful mattes are incredible. I will link the video down below where I'm using this. It is an incredible good palette. Oh, yeah, my dog is walking past uh, outside. That's what we're hearing. Okay, I am going to mention the Tinkerbell palette. I like this so much. Colourpop, when it comes to eyeshadows this year, they have been on a roll. I still have something from Colourpop to, to tell you about. This is beautiful. I... Mm, this could have been even better if, if we didn't have both of these. Like, we didn't need both of these, like, pinky light taupes. Like, I don't know what to do with those. But, like, all of these other shades are absolutely incredible. Like, one of these... Could, like, imagine if this one had been this depth instead. Like, like just, just darker so that you could actually do a pinky brown look as well. Instead of just... Like, because it's... it's I don't know. I, for me, they just look like throwaway shades, but maybe I'm not getting the concept. What do I know? But the quality is beautiful. The look that I did with this, I was so happy with it. Colourpop, I don't know. They had a dip. Like, they didn't have the best year 2020 when it came to eyeshadows. Some of them weren't perfect. Some people are saying that they think it might have been due to uh, the pandemic and that they maybe didn't get the resources that they needed because uh, they have their lab, like their factory in the US. I don't know about that, but 2021 eyeshadows from Colourpop, they have been incredible. This is a really, really beautiful palette. I really like the uh, packaging as well. I will say though, there are glitter on here and I hate when Colourpop put, gl puts glitter on their palettes because it gets everywhere. It doesn't stick on a palette and I, <laughs> I absolutely hate it with a burning passion. Hate it, hate it, hate it. But I guess it... it it is what it is. I want to talk about something else on Colourpop, and these are their quads. These specifically is the astrology quads that they came out with. These are so good. These are so good. I even did a video uh, not too long ago when I talked about like best like small palettes, and I mentioned these. These are so great. This is my favorite. This is the Secret Life of a Scorpio. This is like a berry dream. All the shades you need for a berry look in just a little small like compact thing. The packaging is pretty sturdy for being in all plastic. You have the info on the back. It's just incredibly qu good quality. I also have the hmm, the bold and the Aries, a more orangey red one. Super pretty. The never uh, Taurus apart. 
This is like more like an earthy browny green thing. And then the last one, this is also a favorite. It's so pretty. This is a tender loving cancer. And it is like more of a cool tone one. This dark like purpley plum. It is so good. I do have a video where I'm using these. I will link down below. But these quads. So good. I'm like blown away by the quality of these. I hope they make more. These are great. I hope I didn't forget anything because we are in top three. We are in top three. I'm just quickly going to mention this because I have a full video on this and I don't want to harp on it too much. But the reformulation of Ace Beauté. Man, man, I'm so happy they reformulated. They reformulated the uh, Paradise Collection and they also reformulated the Flare Palette and the Oceanic Palette. And since then, they have also came out with two new palettes in the new formulation. And I don't know if they will reformulate some of the other ones as well or if they're just going to discontinue them or like what they're going to do. But these are so nice. Like this is a color story that I really love, like you know me, red and pink. The quality of these new Ace Beauté, they're so beautiful. The matte, like nothing sells me a palette like a colorful matte. A colorful matte, a good colorful matte. These are pigmented, blendable, and buildable. Here you can start with the lightest one, build a medium one, and still deepen it up with the darkest one and get a very dramatic result that's not like nothing lifts or stuff like that. It's just such a beautiful formula. In the video uh, that I did with this, I will link the video down below. You should definitely check it out. If you were one of those people that had heard that Ace Beauté had amazing color stories but not an amazing formula, I highly recommend that palette because I was one of those people that said that. I said Ace Beauté, beautiful color stories, amazing, innovative color stories, but the quality wasn't my favorite. I did a look with this one. This is the Oceanic palette. You should definitely check out that video because they really took in the constructive criticism that they were given by the community and they did something really good with it. And the reformulation is beautiful. So yeah, the, it's just, it's just, all of these pots, I'm just putting them together on spot number three because I'm so happy they reformulated because the reformulation is bomb. I should have tried this a long time ago. <laughs> I should have tried this a long time ago, but for some reason I didn't. I just sometimes when things get too hyped, I'm like, it can't be that good. It cannot be that good. You don't get to tell me that the Pat McGrath Foundation is the best thing since sliced bread, but you know, this is great. I am one of those people that don't love the Pat McGrath eyeshadow formula. I know when I say that people get upset. Don't get upset with me. It's okay if you love the formula. I think it's good, but it's not my favorite. But the cheek products and the skin products from Pat McGrath, oh my god, they've been so good. The foundation is beautiful, the powder, the concealer, the blush, it's all very beautiful. I cannot wait for the brand to come out with a bronzer. This like foundation is wonderful. Uh, the bottle is glass there is a pump on it this like beautiful like almost i mean it is probably some kind of a sticker but everything just looks very luxe i have mine in light medium 10 i did uh, this is what i'm wearing today mixed with the glowish by huda skin tint because this foundation was just a smidge too light for me today when i slept with self tanner but it is a beautiful formula that reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona Foundation X because it is liquidy, skin-like, easy to blend out, longevity like no others, doesn't really settle into fine lines, it's beautiful, you can set it with powder or not, it just works beautiful either way. This is just a wonderful foundation and this is a medium to full coverage, but not like Instagram full coverage. It's like what I call the Natasha Denona Foundation X being a editorial full coverage, what we thought full coverage was before Instagram, because now we want like spackle, we want like full on cement to be full coverage. And this is like full coverage, but it's like, it's not gonna cover up your entire like features. It's still, you understand, you, you understand. So I think this is a beautiful foundation. And like I said, I, I personally prefer wearing less of this and wearing it like a, like a medium uh, foundation, like a medium coverage, but it can be built up and look like it's just, it's just a beautiful foundation that looks like your skin, but close to perfection. And when I mean perfection, I of course mean like what the norm thinks perfection is, but 
I prefer foundations that are very liquidy so they don't feel too cakey on the skin and something that's that just dries down and is transfer proof not like transfer proof but you like you can touch your face without getting it on your fingers which for example I could not do with this one this just stays a little bit a little bit like still on the skin some people love that if you have dry skin that's probably perfect I have normal skin absolutely love this one I think it is so perfect if you've been paying attention you already know what's on spot number one i don't think anyone's surprised and it is the collaboration between Uda's eye and uh, three different girls this is the legendary diversa collection if i'm not mistaken it is with annette from annette's makeup corner it's with tina from uh, tina the fancy face and it is with judy uh, i will link all these girls up below i think they did such an amazing job and what i really like about this collab is the diversity and how it's so apparent that the brand let them like put their own personality to it because this is the giant's wolves if you showed me this this and asked me like who is this a collab with i really would have like annette would definitely have been one of the people i would have mentioned because it is dark and there are no light mats in this one and annette is like me i biggest difference between me and annette though is that i like light mats to put like on my lid and in my inner corners I like an all matte look but this is so Annette because it has and she also really likes like darker shimmers as well together with lighter shimmers it's just an incredible color story incredible quality and it has a matte black and she is all about the matte black life and I am as well I'm gonna be honest I even have a matte black on today just to deepen this look up a bit it's just a beautiful color story and there is I don't know if you can see here there is a multi-chrome here can you see this is like when I look at it here it is a blue green when I look at it here it is a lime green but when you see it here is a pink right a pink blue really really pretty color story and I really like that they put this like very unusual color in here and these palettes are not that expensive like it's not like they're affordable but still it's like I think it's in, Sw in Sweden, they're like 285 or something, Swedish crowns. This is a Swedish in the brand, by the way, which is also maybe why it's a little bit close to my heart. But I think they're around 30 US dollars because when I was at the site, they're, they're showing it in Swedish crowns. So to get like a multi-chrome like that in the palette, it's pretty pretty incredible. This is the Tina, uh, the Hummingbird palette. And again, it's very Tina. It is a little bit more shimmer heavy. Annette is more like me with like a matte heavy palette. Tina is more about like colorful, bright shimmers. And I really think that like these darker, more uh, toned down, almost grounded colors here, and then some brights. And there is this pastel blue here. That is such a pretty inner corner highlight. Uh, there's also this multi-chrome in this palette. This is called Fancy. And again, this is a blue, purple, pink. Again, just so incredibly exciting to have these like unusual colors in this palette. It's just such a pretty cool color story. And this is the Red Dragon palette by Judy. I have a full video where I'm using these. They're so, so pretty. This palette is more of a warm neutral palette with a pop of bright red. And this also like dark burgundy, so pretty. And there's some olive greens here. This one is like so, so pretty. It is like an olive green that has a little bit of a red undertone. It's such an interesting duochrome because it is, like I said, a red, I don't know if you, oh, you can see it here, like a red brown with this strong olive green. It's such a cool and innovative way to spruce up a neutral palette because neutrals doesn't have to be boring. There can still be interesting textures, but it doesn't have to be like as bright and as, as peacock as these. I just think that this is such a cool duochrome with a reddish brown, almost brick, and then this bright like olive. Such a pretty color, but yeah. Those were my rankings for this month. Please let me know what you think, if there's any of these that you have tried. What was your favorite product that you tried this month? I would love to hear about it. Also, thank you again, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this video. I'm always so excited to work with HelloFresh. That was everything for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you again tomorrow for a new video.